Okay, so a really common question I get asked on my channel all the time is, how do I set up a drone I just bought? And this is a plug and play drone you're seeing here. I haven't actually set this up yet, so I'm gonna actually show you how I do my procedures when I get a drone for the first time. This is gonna be for plug and play drones that have a receiver already installed. This one happens to have the FreeSky XM Plus receiver. Um, I'm not gonna go into every possible type of receiver that's out there. I would make a extremely long video. I can possibly make specific receiver examples for say installing a receiver and doing a bind on a specific receiver. If you have a request for something specific like that, let me know in the comments below. This example here is going to apply for pretty much any kind of drone that has a receiver. Um, the binding process is gonna be different, obviously, as I said, for each receiver, but in this, in this case, you'll see what it's like for an XM Plus receiver and the radio I'll be using is the, uh, the FreeSky X-Lite radio. And this is actually a micro drone. This is actually the Gep RC Phantom. And uh, it's got, you know, most of your basic parts. It's got motor, it's got ESCs, flight controller, video transmitter, camera. So this uh, procedure here will be applicable to pretty much any size of drone in terms of setting it up, making sure that it's working with Betaflight and also working with your radio. Now the first thing that I do is I bind the receiver to my radio before I hook it up to Betaflight, make sure that I have a bind, and then I can go through and uh, all the Betaflight setup uh, things I need to do, because I need to be able to check to make sure that the radio is working uh, when I'm in Betaflight. So the first thing I do is do the bind. So for, to bind this particular receiver, you have to hold down the bind button, which is right here. And it's kind of a gold colored button may be a different size or a different color on another receiver but typically uh, for most receivers you're going to hold the bind button down while you plug in your battery so this is a bit tricky and uh, getting, i've gotten pretty good at this but basically i use like a little like a screwdriver or something hold down the button here like so and then i go ahead and i plug in a battery And we should be able to see on the lights are going to be different here. So the colors don't really come out too well on the camera. But you have here a green light and a, and a red light. So yeah, it's not really coming out too well on the camera. Should, that means the receiver is in bind mode there. Normally if it's not in bind mode it will just be flashing red. So go ahead and keep this plugged in. The receiver is in bind mode for now. We'll go to our radio, and this is OpenTX. Go ahead and go into our model. Now, I have a model already set up here, and let me just show you here. I bind all of my XM Plus receivers to this uh, D16 mode model here under receiver number 00, and I, ha I can actually bind up as many receivers as I want to this model. I actually make all the models the same in um, the uh, flight controller and I actually don't make any real changes or adjustments in the uh, model and the radio itself. But anyway, so we go to the setup page here and go to the receiver. So basically it's uh, towards the bottom. So actually I came up from the bottom. So this is the top. You can actually press up and come up from the bottom. This is the section for the internal RF or internal um, module. You can also come in the other way from the top and go down, but it's a little bit longer. If you come in this way, you have to pass all these other settings. And then I just hit go to bind and hit bind. And then in this case, I usually do uh, channels 1 to 8 with telemetry off because this uh, the XM Plus doesn't have telemetry anyway. The radio should start beeping. And now you can see that the lights are flashing. I think that's the red lights flashing. It means it's bound. So at that point, we can stop the bind here and then power cycle the receiver. So I'll have to unplug it and plug in again. And so I'm going to leave it unplugged for now because the beeping is kind of annoying. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the flight controller into Betaflight. And I have the radio on. Uh, powered on still, it's on the side here. Um, this particular 
flight controller does not power the receiver uh, via USB, so you have to actually have battery power. But now we'll go ahead and, I'll plug in the battery a little bit later, but we'll, we can go ahead and uh, at least change the setting for the beeper uh, initially. But I'll go ahead and uh, connect to Betaflight. So I have um, Betaflight 10.5.1 configurator on, on my computer. That's the latest version. Go ahead and connect to this and we can see that here in the upper left we have a uh, firmware target of um, Matek F411 and the version that's on here is Betaflight 3.5.7 and you can probably see that the uh, accelerometer needs to be calibrated so uh, try and get this level here and then we'll hit the excel uh, calibration of the accelerometer I don't usually have the accelerometer on and when I fly I usually turn this off but I'm going to leave it on for this example and then uh, I'm going to go uh, well, I'm going to go through each one of these um, options here on the left, so uh, one by one, and then basically to turn the beeper off, it's going to be under modes. So we'll get to that here in a second. So first off, go to ports, and we can see that UART1 is using uh, VTX remote control or smart audio. Actually, this is the IRC tramp protocol, so we know that the video transmitter settings can be changed in the flight controller, so I'm going to actually do that in the CLI. I'll show you how to do that. It's one of my setup procedures, and then we see the, the receiver is on UART2. That's going to be our FreeSky receiver that we just bound. And we can see here under configuration, uh, props are spinning normally, so we'll know that the props need to spin with the, basically the uh, props going in towards the front, on the front and in towards the back, on the back side. We'll check the motor direction here as part of the procedure. Sometimes they don't come properly set, but usually they do, but just do you want to double check, otherwise the quad will flip out when you actually go and fly it. So I check a couple of things here, make sure that, uh, if, for example, if it's a D-Shot 600 ESC, that it's set to D-Shot 600 and not one shot 125, that looks okay. And it looks like this has already been set up, so um, there's not much setup that needs to be done. This one looks like the gyro and pid loop is set properly, it has the accelerometer on, it's got a craft name already installed. Serial receiver is properly set here to, uh, in this case it's Serial and SBUS for FreeSky. If you have a different receiver like a FlySky, then you're probably going to use SBUS or IBUS. And if you have, say, a, um, a Spectrum receiver, then you're going to use Spectrum 1024 or 2048, depending upon which uh, particular receiver. But this is set up properly for FreeSky, we'll leave it on SBUS. And none of these other things I need to mess around with. It has LED strip on. Uh, this, this particular craft doesn't have an LED strip. I'm just going to leave it on anyway. Air mode, OSD, all of these settings look okay. So we'll just leave them alone. I have nothing to change here. And I'll just check the power and battery settings. These look all okay, normal. Um, you can adjust these voltage settings if you wanted a warning a little bit later or earlier. And then these are for your current meter. That looks okay. This just looks like it was set from the factory, so I'm going to leave that alone. And under failsafe here, uh, everything looks okay. Usually I don't have to mess with this. Um, I have a failsafe set in the radio to no pulses. And I, I do check that failsafe is working. I'll show you, I'll show you that a little bit later here. Um, basically turn the radio off while it's armed. Make sure the motor stop. That's how you check to make sure failsafe is working. It's a procedure that you should always check. But these settings look all standard and um, uh, nothing to change here. I'll leave that alone. Under PID tuning, um, yeah, looks like they've made some changes here. I don't know if these are defaults or close to defaults or not. I may need some tuning. I don't know. But I usually try and uh, just uh, try and leave the rates about here with an RC rate of 1 and super rate of 0.7. This is what I like. If you happen to have rates that you like, then just go ahead and put those in here. This will give a max um, rotation rate of 667 degrees per second. Um, so if you prefer more or less, then you just have to adjust these numbers to what you like. And then under filter settings, this looks pretty normal for 357. I'll just leave those alone. And yeah, I'm not going to really be changing anything here. I'm just going to pretty much fly it the, came, the, way, the way it came out of the box. Okay, so now we can go and check here how to make sure the receiver is working. But before I do this, I already know that the beeper is going to go off and it's going to be really annoying, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go into modes here, and it looks like, yeah, for my radio, I'm going to adjust this to what I have set up in that model, and I usually have my arming set over here to the far right, 
and this is on a two position switch and I am going to turn off uh, angle mode and horizon mode. You can set these up to whatever you want and whatever aux channel you happen to have yours on. So some people have like say for example arming on aux 1 and on aux 2 they'll set mode so this is just an example here. Uh, you know maybe we'll have a three position switch where angle will be in the middle and then horizon will be on top and then um, the low position will be acro mode. So you can possibly set up like this but I don't usually use these modes so I turn them off. This you'll have to set up to your particular preference but this is just an example of how you can set up uh, uh, your modes on aux 2. That's just one way. And I'm going to actually, it looks like a beeper set over here so that's turned on. I'm gonna, uh, I believe I have my beeper set on aux 2 in the high position so I'm gonna move that over like this and I usually have uh, flip over after crash turned on but on this particular model um, uh, I'm gonna actually leave it off but if you want to turn it on you can just add it, add this here to whatever aux channel you use. I use sometimes on some of my bigger models all you have it on aux 2 in the center position here on a three position switch but in this case I'm going to leave it off for now I may add it later but yeah, so the beeper should not be turning on now. It's on aux 2 when I plug in the battery. So I hit save to save those modes. And now we'll go back to receiver and let's plug in the battery and we can check to make sure that it is um, the receiver and the radio set up properly. Go ahead and plug this in. And we can see now that the beeper is not going off, thank God. And let's see here. It doesn't look like, let's see here, okay, so we have, we have a bind, okay, yeah, okay, so we have a bind, and now we can move the uh, stick, so let me just show you on camera, uh, moving the roll stick to the right, yeah, so if, uh, here's another thing, that's another common thing that happens, if you move the radio too close to the receiver, the receiver can go into fail safe, it happens sometimes. And uh, it's kind of, uh, usually you want to keep it kind of further away. So you can see it still has a green light. I don't think you can see that in camera right there. So now we're bound and it's not in fail safe. But if you get too close, you can go into fail safe. So I just want to show you that the, you want to check your stick movements. So move the stick to, this is the roll axis. Make sure it's moving in the proper direction. So usually right, the, it'll go up in value and left will go down on pitch if you, if you, elevator if you move the stick down that should go down, down in values and up goes up in values so it should be centering around 1500 which is looking about right same with yaw if you move it to the right uh, this is going to increase in values and left will decrease in values so this is set up properly and then also throttle it should be down below 1000 if it's moving it up it should be up to about 2000 so that's all looking good and you can see here that under channel map, I, this is set to AETR, that needs to match what you have set up in your model and in your radio. So if it doesn't match, then what's going to happen is the uh, roll axis is going to nap you on the roll axis, and when you actually do the roll, it'll actually be a different channel because it's mapped differently. So check that, make sure that in whatever channel map is in Betaflight should match whatever you have set up in the radio. That's another common problem that people seem to have. And then we can check the um, switches here. So I have my arming on this switch here, and I have my um, uh, aux 2 on this switch here. So if I move this to, to the top position, that'll cause the beeping to go on. That's the motor beeping. And then we can also check the arming. I don't think it'll arm because it's connected to USB. Yeah, it's not going to let me arm. I will show you how to arm and then um, do the fail safe check when it's not connected to the computer. I'll show you that at the end. And then a couple things I want to change here in the receiver tab is the stick low and stick high threshold. I usually set this to 1000 and 2000. That just gives you the, the most uh, stick resolution. And then on some receivers they'll have, um, for example here, this XM Plus receiver has the uh, RSSI firmware installed. So on AUX 12 you can see the RSSI values, and then that'll show up in your OC if that's set up in the OC. And we'll check that here in a second. But you can see that's actually functioning. So I'm going to actually uh, set up the RSSI channel instead of being disabled. I'm going to actually set that to AUX 12. 
So this this is something that they missed. Uh, they have a they have the receiver in there that has the firmware, but they didn't put that in the flight controller. So I put that in there. Now we can get RSSI on our OSD with that. So we'll go ahead and that, that should be everything. And then we can hit save. And then we, uh, as I said, we covered the modes already. Um, there's nothing to change in adjustments usually or servos. I'm not going to cover any of that stuff. Um, we can actually now go into the motors tab and check the uh, motor direction, make sure everything is spinning in the correct direction. So uh, basically you have your battery plugged in and you have your USB plugged in as well. And here we can, you have to actually say you understand the risks to arm or to, to, actually, uh, to actually turn the motors on. Uh, so you click this here and then I'm going to actually move the, this slider up just a little bit so the motors are spinning and I'm going to check the direction of the motors are spinning make sure they're spinning in the correct direction. So I'll click this and move this up a little bit and then we'll check the motor direction. You don't want to be spinning too fast here and don't, you know, don't stop the motors. So these are okay. So they're all spinning in the right direction. Then we make sure that the motors are in, they're actually correctly mapped. So there should be motor one over here. And this should be motor two. Motor three should be back here. And then this should be motor four. So I'm just check those one by one. Make sure that they're spinning. Okay, motor one is correct. Motor two is correct. Motor three is correct. And motor four is correct. So all that is set up properly. So nothing to change there. Go ahead and unclick the, I understand the rest of the, the motors won't spin up accidentally. And let's go to the OSD tab. And here it looks like, yeah, they have an NTSC camera. So make sure that you, whatever camera you have is matching. Um, make sure that whatever camera you have is matching uh, the for video format here. So if you have, if you have to set to NTSC, you have to have an NTSC camera. If you have a PAL camera, make sure it's set to PAL. I'm going to turn on the RSSI value over here, and then we'll just move this over here. So it'll show up there now. Um, and I'm going to leave all this other stuff on here. It looks all fine. I'm going to hit save. And the last thing I want to do, okay, so that, sh that should all be fine. And the last thing I want to do is actually change the video transmitter channel. So we'll change that in the CLI. And here we type in get VTX. And we can see that it's set to band 4, channel 2, and I'm going to change that to band 5, channel 1. So I just set uh, ETX band equals 5, that's race band, and set ETX channel equals to 1, and then we'll go ahead and hit save. And let's go ahead and check our monitor here and we're going, it should be set to the right channel. You can see here's my hand in front of the camera and we're set to the proper channel now. So that is pretty much it. So I got um, the, the VTX set. I checked the motor direction. It's bound. Now I'm just going to check make sure fail safe is working. So I'll go ahead and at this point I'm going to disconnect the flight controller. Still have everything plugged in. We should be able to arm now. You can see that is arming. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio off. And the remoter should stop if failsafe is working properly. There you go. So now we know that we've tested failsafe. It's working. The motors are beeping because it's in failsafe. Go ahead and turn the radio back on. There we go. Turn everything back on. It's reconnected and the beeping has stopped. So that's the last thing we've checked. Failsafe's working. Everything's set up now. All I have to do is put the props on and go and fly it. So that's pretty much it in terms of the complete setup. Uh, yeah, in terms of other stuff I mentioned before, let me know in the comments below. Uh, this is pretty much it for a basic setup of pretty much any drone. And this is what I do. It takes usually it takes me about five minutes because I don't have to talk about this in, on, on camera. And uh, I can get out and fly. This is a really good way to, um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of miles out there now that are set up pretty much with a receiver and everything. And like this one's set up pretty good. There's not a lot of work to do. Sometimes in my other videos, I'll explain if uh, it wasn't set up properly, and then I, I usually go show you what I, I've changed in the model to make it work properly. But in this case, it's pretty straightforward, worked pretty well. Hopefully this will help you guys out in terms of your setup and your particular model. 
and get you up and running as quickly as possible. Anyway guys, that's going to do for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.